Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for fashion. As a season one fashion emblem winner, I have the responsibility of judging your fashion, and we will have another fashion session again soon. But today, it is time for me to show off what I have been working on for my characters in the biggest fashion show to date. In an effort to keep this video brief, I am only gonna be talking about the fashion aspects of my characters and not the builds or anything like that, at least not anything beyond a sentence or two. I only have two self-imposed rules for my fashion. Number one, no reusing shaders on the same class. If I've already used a shader from a previous fashion show on my Titan, I cannot use it again on my Titan, etc., etc. The only exception being if I'm using it on one piece of armor to try to color match the rest of it. Number two, I can only use, at most, two pieces of armor from the same set. For Fashion Emblem contests that Bungie holds, I hold myself to an additional rule, and that is, pick an uncommonly used shader to stand out from the crowd a little bit more. It is something I encourage others to do, even if boring or common shaders win all the time as well. Otherwise, generally speaking, Whenever I make an armor set, I try to theme it based on the build that it is being used for, and if I don't do that, then I just try to make them look well-themed or cohesive. I also try to make the sets as optimized as possible with my stats, but as I run out of armor pieces, well, my armor sets become less optimized. Let's start with my main Titan set, which I use for Vault of Glass. The goal here was to make a set that didn't have Curus of the Falling Star look so weird. It's a pretty big chest piece that makes you look like you have a beer belly, sort of, and there aren't a ton of other armor pieces to accommodate for that look. I have a tall helmet to elongate my body to not have it so focused on my chest piece, along with shoulders that match the size of the chest. My legs and class item are also bulky to draw attention away from the chest piece and make it all feel matched up. The Seven Sisters shader on my helmet works really well in the character menu, but out in the wild it doesn't really look as matched up, but I still really like it. I went for a more monotone look here because I mainly use stasis, and I felt like this shader was a good fit for the subclass. I wanted something a bit subdued. My Sunbreaker set is what won me the emblem a while back, and I've actually rocked this next version of the armor set for a while, but this is my first time putting it into a video. Sunbreaker, all about fire, being lit up, my previous set had lights on it, and I think the Solstice gloves work here again, lighting myself up. I wanted to feel like a jet with this look, the wings of the chest piece sort of acting like an extension of my shoulders to give the look some more presence. I love to match shaders with my subclass, which is why I'm using War Weary, bright orange and bright whites for Sunbreaker, and to really stand out. My PvP set is a much sleeker loadout, as I value being nimble in the Crucible. Purple is my favorite color, has nothing to do with me using Defender at all, and I think it matches up really nicely with the gold on Crest of Alpha Lupi, although I do also use Dune Marchers, replacing the chest piece with a slim Vanguard chest piece from Season 2. I have a mix of purple shaders to really keep the focus on everything being purple, as opposed to the purple-yellow combo on Byzantium Lotus. I also really like helms that have a bit of verticality to them, which is why I opted for the Iron Banner helm here. Not really into perfectly circular helms, even though I know my Sunbreaker helm wasn't exactly square-shaped or very tall or anything like that. Next up is my Worm God Caress build, which I haven't really gotten to use a whole lot of as of late. I rarely get to use green because there aren't any green-based subclasses, but because the Worm Gods have that deep green light, I can make a green-focused set. Someone literally just subbed to me off-stream. CR John, 59 months, thanks if you're watching. <laughs> I kind of wanted to look like a beetle for this one. The arms have these big circles in them. It's very rounded, so I wanted to have a lot of round shapes as part of the armor set. Also have these sort of swirls and curls in the armor, the effects with the light, the legs, the arms. I also wanted the helm to have a green accent as opposed to just being a bright green helm. I don't think a green helm really works or flows as well here. Finally, we have my try-hard armor set for GM Nightfalls. My chat got to design this 
armor set via voting. I uploaded a video of that process if you want to go check it out. Before this, though, I think my armor set was something along these lines. I don't exactly remember it completely. Celestial Helm, one of the best looking helms in the game for Titan. It's a very imposing helm, and that's what I want this set to convey. A very imposing Titan, one that you're not going to be able to knock down very easily, considering how much I got and still get to spam Banner Shield. Moving to my Hunter, I actually have some of my favorite Hunter sets and some of my favorite sets overall that I've ever made here, starting with my Celestial Nighthawk build. I really enjoy how the Cinder Char Shader worked out here. I think it flows super nice on the set. It's like a Vanguard Shader, but just not as in your face about it when you have some white mixed in there. It's not just solid blue, solid orange shader screaming at your face. Plus, the Knicks haven't even been good for like 20 years, so I don't even have a reason to rock that color pattern aggressively. For this, I wanted a very smooth, sleek Hunter, very curvy armor to match the beak of the mask. I even have the cloak sort of matching that circular pattern from a profile view. I really like to have big hoods for my Hunter cloaks. I'm not really into a hood that doesn't give you at least some amount of space. I like that headroom to make my helm look a bit bigger. My Omnioculus build is probably one of my favorite sets in terms of its theming. Very technology focused, playing off of the chess piece, very robotic. This is one of very few sets where I use multiple armor pieces from the same set, but it's for a pretty good reason here. I wanted this to be as robotic as possible, circles and eyeballs everywhere. Anything that looks like a computer, I wanted it on this character. The only thing that I don't like is that the collar of the cape sort of looks more orange than the deep red that I'm really wanting. Next, we have my Orpheus Rig Hunter, and the name of the game here was Accessories. Orpheus Rig has this little pouch on the side with the ornament, and I said, screw it, let's have as many matching accessories as possible with it. I wanted the helm to be almost completely hidden as well. You can barely make out the purple, and even when you can see the helm, it looks almost completely blank. A shader that I was also considering was Ancient Defender, even though I used it on my Titan last time. I think it fits really well here. I used Reef Mate on the chess piece here because Byzantium Lotus had a bit too much yellow going on, and I wanted the yellow to be an accent, not the focal point. Next up is my Raiden Flux build, and this is the only time I go with a non-hooded look here. The concept for Raiden Flux is that I wanted my armor set to look like a giant heat sink that you would find in a laptop or something. That's just sort of what Raiden Flux looks like to me. So anything with pipes or tubing or even stuff that looks like a circuit board, that's what I was going for. And I think this one turned out pretty well. Even the helm's pattern on the front sort of looks like a circuit board, kind of. Bright whites and blues to match arc. I want to be seen in this, and I really like that I was able to use four completely different shaders and have it look as clean as it does. My solo GM build is based around 6th Coyote, but I wanted a scrappy sort of scavenger vibe from this set because this is mainly for solo content. Lots of focus on cloths, leathers, fabrics, minimizing metal usage, as much as possible or only using it very sparingly. I wanted the set to look like I had made the armor myself, like my hunter was just finding whatever they could to survive in the wild. I'm using iron oxide to have sort of a washed out look to it, like it's been sitting out in the sun for way too long and the colors are starting to get bleached. The helm looks like it has some sort of graffiti or paint on it too, which I feel like really fits this vibe. Finally, my generic no exotic armor set is one of the earliest sets that I put together. It had an exotic, uh, I just don't remember what it was. I couldn't really tell you what the thought process or the theme for this armor set was, but it's the basis for my solo GM set as it uses the same cloak and gloves. I think it started because I was trying to find pieces that made the helm look good because I got a good roll on it and I could use a very rare ornament in the War Simulator ornament from FWC, which was only available during Faction Rally. Chitin Slate just looks great on the set. I almost feel like I have some sort of leadership position while wearing it. I don't use this set a ton anymore, but I still had it from a while back, so I thought I would include it. All right, my Warlock. Up next, not gonna lie, I, I think Warlocks have it tough when it comes to fashion. Most of their visual is taken up by robes and helm. That's it. So let's let's see what I came up with here. 
My Stasis Necrotic Grip set is one of my favorites. Once again, very rare that I get to use green on an armor set, so I was pretty excited for that. Necrotic Grips having that green glow just made that a really easy choice. Given the theme of Necrotic Grips, I wanted the set to feel very primal, lots of bone and animal type fabrics or looks. The helm has a sort of snake-like look to it with the two green stripes coming down the middle, kind of feeling like fangs. I even got the boots and the bond to stick out a little bit with the texture kind of vibing with the animal poison snake themes here on the boots and the big fang looking thing on the bond. Really stoked at how this came out. I even used five different shaders for it. Crown of Tempest build is back yet again. Uh, I really would like to see a different crown ornament that has a different take on a crown because the others, while different, still have the same vibe to them. Celestial robes take up the majority of the look here and combined with the original Crown of Tempest really pushes the set into an astral theme. Obviously the robes do a lot of the heavy lifting here given their name, but you know, still. I was very torn between using Knight's Chill versus Seven Sisters in terms of the overall shader, but I think Knight's Chill sort of fits the mysterious deep space astral vibe that I wanted over the more whimsical Seven Sisters. My Geomag Transversive Steps PvP build has incredibly similar vibes to my Arc Hunter set. Oh, I see that there are tubes on my legs. Better find anything that also has tubes on it to complete the set. And that's what I did. The legs needed to be on display here the most, considering how crucial they are to the entire build and the visual of it. And the interlaced robes actually fit well here, both in terms of the tubing aspect and being able to see my legs. So that's nice. I wanted a bigger helm for this look. I didn't feel like the small helms were really doing my robes justice because, because it just kind of looked like I had a disproportionately small head compared to the rest of my body. Phoenix Protocol, I really need to grab the ornament for these robes. I don't even know what they look like, but these robes are tough for the fashion game because there's just so much going on color-wise. I ended up going with Butterbark here, a shader I discovered that I really liked when my chat was making my Titan's armor set. We have a bit more of a reserved look here as a result, not really trying to scream fire at people. Sort of looks like on the aftermath of a big fire, you know, now just smaller, kind of tame embers burning out. Gotta have the bond be on fire, though, to match up a little bit. And because I had that bond, I opted for the Solstice Helm to continue the light show a little bit. I'm sure this video is going to lead to many more people posting their fashion to my Twitter. What I can tell you is that while I do look at most of them, please do not expect a response as the last time I did a fashion show video a couple of months ago, I was drowning in your posts. Uh, I will have another Judge My Fashion video coming soon as people have been requesting that. So if you would like to have a chance to be in that video, be sure to swing by my streams in the next week or two, twitch.tv slash dado, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, whenever I'm streaming Destiny. And uh, I'm going to try to do on, uh, one of those soon before uh, the season story content is, uh, is done. Cool? All right. Thank you for watching my season 15 fashion show. I will see you next time.